Sure. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be part of uh, this summit again. I enjoyed it last year very much. Today, I represent Softred as the CEO, and we're uh, excited to share with you a presentation that will emphasize uh, the need for zero trust cybersecurity in healthcare. I also have the privilege of serving as the Chief Innovation Officer for the Government Blockchain Association, which is a not-for-profit uh, organization uh, that has more than 67 chapters around the world, and also uh, serve as an expert advisor for the European Union Blockchain Observatory and Forum. Those are all relevant for our meeting today. What I will do, I'll briefly share a few slides, and uh, then we'll go from there. Please also uh, let me know if you cannot see the slides or if you do not hear me well. The industrial and healthcare evolution and how they went in parallel for a long time and what we're observing now. Then healthcare 4.0 trends, how we can leverage web 3.0, zero trust cybersecurity detail emphasis that we need to all work on and then future directions. I wanted to start with just a brief highlight on why are we even talking about zero trust and why not be aware in calendar year 2022 is $4.35 million per breach. This is an increase from last year when we were at $3.49 million. So as you can see, massive year. The global negative economic impact from all cybersecurity data breaches worldwide is estimated to be $6 trillion. In this type of economy, you can imagine what other beautiful things we could do with $6 trillion instead of having them due to data breaches. Then why is it important to talk about zero trust in healthcare? Well, just two stats to, to give you a hint. In calendar year 2021, we don't have the full data for 2022 yet, but it will be out soon. Healthcare had the highest total average data breach cost of any industry, and the number is staggering, as you can see. Additionally, 44 million, close to 45 million health records were exposed or stolen in 2021, despite all our safeguards, making it the second highest year for breach records in the history. Here are a few additional key changes that we've seen over the last few months. We've always cared about privacy. We always try to prevent data breaches, but now we have even more push from a regulatory perspective to do more than what we've ever done. And here are just a few highlights. I would call your attention to the framework published by NIST that is specifically emphasizing zero trust. Also, ISO and IEC 27001 standard, which is very important for privacy and security the FDA regulatory guidelines for cybersecurity, and a few others. Very important for us to change the paradigm moving forward and not only do the traditional cybersecurity programs, but also engage in these zero trust customized solutions that can really um, prevent and mitigate cyber threats. I would also like to highlight that the whole, like Andre just mentioned, the investment ecosystem has also uh, realized that cybersecurity is very important. Cybersecurity is actually on the top of the agenda of most C-suites worldwide. And therefore, you see that venture capital has invested massively, not only in total amount of dollars, but also in the number of deals and in the size of each deal. Additionally, the mergers and acquisitions ecosystem is also very active, as you can see on the screen. 77.5 billion in deals across 286 transactions. And these are numbers just from 2020, which are full. Soon we're gonna have also 2021 and 2022. As you know, these happen over a period of, of time. And now I would like to, to share a few of the elements when we examine industrial and healthcare evolutions, how they've evolved in parallel, and what is happening now. When we look at the industrial revolution, you all are very familiar. We went from mechanization to mass production, electrical engineering, to automation, computers, electronics, and now we are in cyber physical systems and internet of things era. 
there are many experts who also state that Web 3.0 will thrust us into the next industrial revolution. Additionally, healthcare has evolved in parallel. As you can see, we went from healthcare revolution 1.0 when we focused on our own organizations to healthcare 2.0 where we focused on inter-organizations data sharing. Then we evolved on focusing on national programs, big data, data exchanges between many institutions and patient portals. And healthcare 4.0 was characterized by global AI powered and real-time intelligence, as well as a push towards remote monitoring. Again, global experts are suggesting that we're also at the cusp of the next healthcare revolution, or I like to call it Renaissance. And again, we will highlight how Web 3.0 can or cannot help with this next revolution. Here is another important parallel that we would like to draw. As you can see, there are many commonalities and cybersecurity is at the top as we highlighted. Of course, IoT and a focus on remote connectivity is also something that, that strikes us in both. What are now some specific healthcare 4.0 trends that we wanted to highlight? I know this is a busy slide, but I think it's important to see the massive amount of technology and the trends that we're uh, encountering. So not only do we see an emphasis on digital identity and biometrics, data fabric, cybersecurity mesh, privacy enhancing computations, and hyper automation and so forth, but also the behaviors and the types of exchanges are also on anyone's uh, radar currently. So we have to increase the ability to share data amongst not only all key stakeholders in the ecosystem, but also with novel entrants into the healthcare ecosystem. As we've seen, there are numerous companies that used to never be in health tech, and now they're actually trying to, to make their entry. So hyper-connectivity, consumer centricity, cyber AI defense systems, zero trust solutions, Enterprise AI deployments, enterprise blockchain deployments are currently visible in the health tech ecosystem. And just a few years ago, no one would ever talk about any of these. Additionally, when we look at the rest of the industry, the focus on autonomic systems, generative AI, bioprinting, renewable power has started to also infuse the healthcare ecosystem through our vendors, suppliers, strategic partners, as well as a variety of applications that are part of the rest of the health tech ecosystem, even if not directly involved in, in care delivery. I would also like to highlight the fact that we see more and more smart devices. It's estimated that we have about 2 billion smart devices currently connected. Also, uh, space travel. I was shocked recently. I went to a space uh, conference and more than half was dedicated to space health. And I had not been aware of that. So it was intriguing to see the, the major advances we're making in that domain as well. I also have seen increased uh, publications and increased conferences focusing on how we can leverage quantum technologies in health tech. And as we just mentioned, major emphasis on what Web 3.0 transition can bring to us and how we need to adjust. So what are some of the top technologies now driving healthcare 4.0? This list was created after reviewing all major consulting groups and all major publications that we all follow. And I just uh, made a, a summary out of all of them and, and selected the ones that consistently rank high. So for instance, artificial intelligence portfolio tools are consistently ranked in the top. No matter what source you're looking at, they will always be in the top three. Blockchain and digital ledger technologies have risen in rank. They used to be at the bottom uh, and were even challenged many years. Uh, AR, VR, XR, and holograms are also on the rise. Nanotechnology and nanomedicine, I would say, is having a renaissance. We used to see that 10 years ago quite a lot, and, and then there was a, a silence for a while. But now we're seeing absolute major advances, and that's probably related to the advances in material sciences. Next generation sequencing and genomic medicine, same thing due to the massive advancements uh, in the technology that we have. Additionally, probably the Nobel Prize in Medicine for CRISPR has helped as well, but we see tremendous 
uh, increases in adoption for next generation sequencing. And then, of course, wearable sensors, bio implants, robotics, exoskeletons, and so forth. As you can see, the list is, is very long. For now, we mentioned, of course, the beautiful tech trends. But as we all know, we have a lot of challenges when we deal with health technologies. We continue to see a massive digital divide that has prevented adoption um, as much as we would have hoped when we create all these health technologies. Also, digital literacy and digital fluency are ongoing problems. And that includes not only the consumers, but also healthcare providers. Depending on the demographic within healthcare practitioners, you can see that many still struggle with using technology, embedding technology in their current workflows, and really achieving the kind of optimal performance that we all hope for. Because the reason why we created health tech in the first place was to augment human intelligence and human uh, capabilities, not decrease their performance. Uh, of course, we also continue to see a health equity divide. And over the last year, I would say we have seen tremendous push to, to improve that situation. Ongoing financial divide, there continues to be, unfortunately, uh, a quite large segment of the population that cannot afford their, their care. And there are several startups that are trying to address that as well. Cybersecurity, as we just highlighted, ethics breaches, lack of digital trust, and cultural barriers. On the counter <clears throat> side, we also have a lot of opportunities to these challenges. So we can do a better job at repairing digital trust. We can have an enhanced health data ownership. And I would say the startup ecosystem this past two years has, has brought us numerous startups uh, that are focusing exclusively on how to increase access to data, how to increase ownership of data, how patients can be self-sovereign in, in managing their data. And that also leads us to the opportunity to enable health data monetization. And that is, is currently, again, on the agenda for many, not only startups, but also larger enterprises to see how they can leverage the current technology to monetize their data. We must continue to work uh, to improve safety. We continue in the United States to spend 49 cents out of every dollar on adverse events and iatrogenic healthcare issues, despite all our efforts. And also we continue to have rural areas where numerous patients do not have access to care. We must continue to work together to improve outcomes and experience, redesign healthcare delivery, building a culture of digital ethics and cyber resilience, and of course, for those of you that might not be aware, but the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals alignment is currently very important. The National Institute of Health has also published a 2030 agenda that focuses on sustainable health. And of course, as we've seen in the pandemic, a lot of uh, human rights were violated. So there are a lot of organizations that are trying now to do a better job how we can use technology to align ourselves with the United Nations human rights agenda and safeguard those human rights instead of violating them. So we referenced Web 3.0 quite a lot. So how can we leverage Web 3.0 and what do we need to do from a cybersecurity perspective to not have even more data breaches? Just to first highlight, I wanted to make sure that everybody is aware what we're referencing when we're saying Web 3.0. So it's the next iteration of the World Wide Web, which will be decentralized, open, and of greater utility. That's what our intent is. <clears throat> it's uniquely situated at the intersection of the next industrial and healthcare revolution, because as we mentioned, it can offer opportunities not only for data ownership and <clears throat> data monetization, but also of a whole new way of preserving privacy and enhancing security. These are some of the zero trust cybersecurity uh, domains that when we transition to Web 3.0, we must take into consideration. And some revolve around technology, some revolve around the experience that our healthcare providers and healthcare consumers will have, as well as all other key stakeholders in the ecosystem, how they will interact with Web 3.0. Of course, the architecture, very important. And then the human computer interface, 
will be essential because that's what Web 3.0 will allow more than ever. A totally different immersive experience. Similarly, the way we examine the industrial revolution and healthcare evolution, we also need to look at the web evolution <clears throat> and how did we get to Web 2.0 and what are we hoping to achieve with Web 3.0. Just a brief recap, Web 1.0, we had basic web pages, HTML and portals. We could mostly just have read-only interaction, more of a directory access like a virtual yellow pages, banner advertising, and very limited internet access. Then we evolved to Web 2.0 to have much more user-generated content. We got into the era of blogs and content sharing and tagging, mobile access, apps increased more than ever before. High-speed communications are now an expectation. And of course, we witnessed global internet access. With Web 3.0, all experts hope to also have much more immersion and live streams, smart applications, increased user engagement, behavioral advertising, semantic web capabilities, and so forth. So what makes Web 3.0 so unique? Here is just a mini infographic uh, for our audience to, to just get the basics. I would uh, encourage you to, to look up many of the wonderful infographics that are uh, much more detailed on Web 3.0 as well. But for our general audience, I wanted to highlight that, of course, we'll have the core powered by blockchain, AI, and we're hoping to, to also have increased peer-to-peer -peer networking and increased connectivity and ubiquity. So what will the impact of Web 2.0 be? And specifically, why do we care about it in healthcare? It is expected that it will redesign, recalibrate, and completely disrupt health and wellness from a people, process, as well as products and services perspective. That's why we see so many startups in the ecosystem pushing to transition to Web 3.0 and offering a whole plethora of services that will be uh, powered by Web 3.0. When we look at the uh, uh, ecosystem, so far, we already see startups in each of these domains, startups that are hoping to increase wellness, prevention of disease, surveillance of disease, improving diagnosis or treatment, as well as assisting us in augmenting our current disease management uh, methods. And many are already, of course, using genomics and other um, scientific advances that can help us rethink longevity and how we think about disease versus aging. Numerous experts already state that if Web 3.0 transition is successful, we might actually have it power healthcare not only 4.0, but 5.0. And here are some suggestions of how healthcare 5.0 would be defined. Some experts think that equitable health will be the one that, that will define healthcare 5.0. The same way we used to have value-based care and population health before, now it would be a focus on equitable health. Additionally, the National Institute of Health has also published a 2030 agenda that is uniquely focused on precision health and smart, personalized health. It's essential to, to take a look at some of the regulatory guidelines and frameworks that are being built because all of them are focusing on precision medicine and how smart healthcare can, can become a standard of care. As we highlighted when we examined the evolution of the industrial revolution as well as the healthcare revolution, interconnectivity is at the crux of all of this and specifically human technical interaction. This infographic very nicely highlights how almost every domain in the health tech ecosystem has been touched by this interconnectivity. And of course, that increases our cyber vulnerabilities. This is why when we started this presentation, we highlighted the increase in cyber threats, increase in success of the cyber attacks, the cost of those cyber attacks, and the massive amount of not only humans uh, affected, but also organizations that, that suffered in, in reputation, of course, damages. When we talk about Web 3.0, I wanted to also uh, take the opportunity to highlight the difference between Web 3.0, which is a tech architecture, and then the metaverse, which you probably heard about, which is 
if you will, a simple analogy could be the old UI UX, the way we interact with this new Web 3.0 ecosystem. One of the definitions that you'll find is that the metaverse can be defined as a simulated digital environment that uses augmented reality, virtual reality, and blockchain, along with concepts borrowed from social media to create spaces for rich user interaction mimicking the real world. And again, I caution that there are numerous definitions out there. What's very important is to not confuse Web 3.0 with the metaverse. Both have been at the crux of a lot of uh, healthcare startups, and there are even uh, several larger organizations that have started to promote health metaverse, and even some hospitals that are uniquely already uh, powered by a metaverse environment. When we examine the layers of the metaverse, again, you'll find numerous infographics out there, and I caution you not to obsess over which one is correct or, or not correct. And more importantly, look at the structure. You'll usually have seven, nine, ten layers. Everybody publishes a different uh, infographic, but the core is to, to pay attention which ones of the layers are related to the technology, which ones of the layers are related to the experience, and which ones of the layers are related to the apps that will build all around this ecosystem and then you'll see it's very easy to understand as you can see in this specific example this unique infographic published uh, it has seven layers and you can see how it has concentric circles that highlight the infrastructure then the human interface the decentralized components the importance of spatial computing the opportunity of a creator economy to be part of, of the healthcare ecosystem, the discovery, which is, of course, the social aspects and experience. We have a tremendous opportunity to use gamification to our advantage in healthcare over the next decade or so. Additionally, you might hear the term omniverse, and that also requires a lot of uh, cybersecurity, of course. It's a term coined by NVIDIA, and as you can see, their definition is, is very simple. Uh, that is also uh, very much talked about in, in large healthcare <clears throat> deployments when we think about health hospital systems, uh, health communities, smart health cities. Omniverse is, is probably a more uh, relevant conversation to be had. We're not going to focus on a DAO. I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows that when we talk about a new healthcare environment like Healthcare 4.0, we must also rethink governance. And that would also help us with cybersecurity threats, of course. As I mentioned, when we think about personalized medicine and health with all these new users in the healthcare ecosystem now being part of this new ecosystem, that increases our cyber vulnerabilities, like we highlighted. Of course, it will also allow each uh, user to maybe monetize their data and own their data, but that also makes them highly vulnerable to, to malicious actors. So having zero trust for personalized medicine and health is more important than ever. Same applies for equitable health. The most sensitive data are, are socioeconomic uh, data, the, the determinants of health that were always protected like a golden egg now will be available uh, in much more databases because we're focusing on equitable health which again means that we need to safeguard that data more than ever same as we mentioned there is a tremendous push towards smart clinics smart homes smart operating rooms smart hospitals that also is is amazing for our progress and to deliver better uh, care but also again opens up endless uh, possibilities for malicious cyber attacks. So zero trust for these type of hospital rooms and, and smart operating rooms will be essential. This is just one example how uh, Siemens is uh, imagining a smart hospital connected care model. And just imagine every single one of these interaction points and every single one of these devices can be the source of a cyber attack. Same thing for smart homes. As we know, a lot of uh, healthcare devices and of course the ecosystem in the startup world is focusing heavily to provide a variety of, of opportunities for smart home healthcare. That also opens up the opportunities for cyber threats. So we must have customized engineering solutions that help safeguard these. 
I would also like to call your attention to the opportunity we have for creating digital health twins and how they can help us specifically for cyber threats, not only for improving outcomes, which was my original passion, and that's the focus of another uh, keynote, how we can leverage digital health twins to improve safety, to improve outcomes, and how to also redesign uh, healthcare completely from an administrative perspective. But today I wanted to highlight the power of digital health twins to help us with cybersecurity attacks. Here are just some examples of digital twins for those of you that might not be aware yet that huge progress has been made. We already have a digital twin of a heart, lungs, and a company is working very heavily on having a neuro digital twin. So what are some of the concerns for cybersecurity and cyber resilience? As we mentioned, healthcare in this new ecosystem in, for healthcare 4.0 has a variety of wearable sensors <clears throat> telehealth, apps, biometrics, smart wallets, everything we just emphasized, that will expose us to all these threats and we must be very much focused on, on providing not only cybersecurity but also cyber resilience programs. Here are just some examples of the existing metaverse hospitals and all of these already have efforts towards building zero trust. So we talked a lot about this zero trust cybersecurity. So what is it? What are the principles that, that are at the foundation of a zero trust environment? And as you can see, all data and services are considered resources. All communications are secured regardless of location. Access to enterprise resources is session-based. Access to resources is determined dynamically. We must have, when we develop zero trust solutions, a continuous security posturing strict authorization and access enforcement, integration with enterprise detection and response. And in very simple terms, I like to always summarize it. You trust no one and verify everybody. And then it's very easy to, to understand. What are some of our challenges when we design zero trust engineering solutions? We must convey to those business partners that it's not a plug and play, like you order an iPhone in a box and can plug it in. You must develop not only a zero trust architecture, but create a cyber safety culture in the organization and a cyber resilience program, not just a cyber security program to determine when you, when you had breaches. You want to be able to sustain and build a long term, dynamically adaptable cyber resilience model. Also, harmonizing your cyber program with your ethics program is essential. When we do the analysis and the root cause of all the data breaches, more than 90% due to interoperability challenges and a lack of harmonization between cyber programs and ethics programs, not to mention a lack of collaboration between HR, ethics, cyber data teams, and so forth. Additionally, we continue to have the challenges, of course, of portability and cost. As we mentioned, when we examine the whole ecosystem with all the things we mentioned so far in terms of the healthcare trends and the challenges, we have an opportunity to, to deploy these modern tools such as digital cyber twins to build smart cyber resilient cities from the beginning. And, and we're talking about health cities as well. And to also build smart cyber security for Web 3.0 for this new healthcare ecosystem. And as we mentioned, although not everybody's familiar, but push towards net zero and push towards sustainable health is on the agenda of the World Health Organization as well as the National Institute of Health. Very quickly, the solutions we have is to bridge the cyber literacy divide, enhance cyber fluency, increase collaboration, stimulate investments, design new cyber standards, design new cyber metrics, and develop customized zero trust solutions. And I'm very proud to say that I'm part of a team that has developed uh, zero trust solutions and we're looking forward to collaborating with all of you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share a few thoughts. Thank you. Dr. Ingrid, thank you so much for, for all that information. I really liked, I, I wasn't able to catch it at the end, if you don't mind repeating it again. You said, uh, I, I forget the first part, but you said, trust no one. What was that quote that you said? 
Yeah, so trust nobody and verify everyone. So okay, in zero trust, trust nobody and verify we everybody. We assume that you cannot trust them. Yes, everyone. <laughs> That, no, that I, I agree, you know, I mean, especially in, in the world that we live in today, you know, online, you know, it's, it's, it could be a scary place of so making sure you're verifying everything. Um, you know, we are at the time. I once again want to thank you so much. Let me ask you this. Where can people uh, connect with you offline? Where are you? Yeah, I can be reached on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And I'm looking forward to connecting with everyone. I'm very active on all social media. So if you type in my name, Ingrid Vasilio Feltas, there's no one else on LinkedIn with that name. So looking forward. to. Absolutely. And uh, let me ask you one last question before I let you go. Uh, what is one prediction that you have in 2023 for healthcare 4.0? I, I think we'll see definitely uh, increased uh, push towards smart hospitals and smart city health cities, because I think that's the only way we can actually solve some of the pain points we've identified. That's really interesting. I definitely, uh, you know, I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the World Cup. I think, you know, they're going to be pushing the boundaries in innovation, especially in healthcare. So uh, I'm excited to see, uh, you know, what comes from what transpires from that. So thank you again so much for joining us today. I hope you have a great thank day. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.